I'm Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop, and we are so excited today to show you our first shortcut quilt, which is the Jelly Roll Jam. And you can see the quilts behind us. You can get a wide variety of looks from this pattern. And you can download this for free on our website, www.fatquartershop.com. This pattern uses a moated jelly roll, and a moated jelly roll includes 40 two and a half by width of fabric strips. And you can make two 36 inch square quilts using this jelly roll. So let's get started. Today I decided to use the Scrumptious Jelly Roll by Bonnie and Camille since I love their fabric so much. So our first step is just to unroll the jelly roll. So I'm just going to unroll the jelly roll and look at the prints. And today I'm kind of feeling like I like pink and aqua together. So I'm just going to pick 18 strips out and put them in a stack. And then all the rest of the jelly rolls I'm going to save and use later for another quilt. So now that we have our 18 strips, we need to make three sets of six. So we're just going to lay them out. Don't think too much. Just have fun mixing and matching your colors and your prints. And you don't need to think too much about it. So this is going to be our first set. Some, you know, your colors might touch, they might not. You might have prints next to each other. And in the end, if you look at the quilt, you won't even notice because it's very, very scrappy. So there's my first set of six. And then we'll just go on and do the next. see I didn't take too much time doing it. We just do it very scrappy and we've got three sets of six. And what I do here is I actually take a cell phone picture of each strip set. So if I'm sewing and I leave my project and have to go back to it later, I can remember exactly where all my fabrics were. And what we want to do is we want to stack everything and we're going to label, label the very top print. And this is a very important step. You're going to just stack your fabrics together. So what I'm going to do is on this top print, I'm just going to label this strip the top. And you can just label it at home with a pen, or you can just take some post-it notes and label it. And that way you can always remember where your top print is. And now we are ready to start sewing. Okay. And we're going to take our first two strips you're going to leave your top sign on your first strip so you know that always stays on the left side. What I do is I take my jelly rolls and I line up the triangle edges so that that way I know that they're perfectly aligned. I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam and I use a quarter inch foot on my sewing machine. I'm going to see that everything is aligned perfectly and I'm going to sew with a 2.0 stitch length and there's no need to back stitch and you're just going to sew. And then I stop, make sure that we're aligned, and go. So now we have done our first strip set, and you can see the top is on the left. So since you've labeled that, you know you're adding to the right. You take your next strip from your set, you line up your triangles again and you just start stitching and we are going to repeat that until we have three sets of six all sewn together and remember to use a 2.0 stitch length and your quarter inch seam allowance. And now we're going to start ironing. It's very important for you to press away from your top piece. So we are going to press down. And the way that I press is I'm going to press in segments. And I'm going to do the right half. It's important for you to set your seam. Setting your seam just means pressing down gently. 
and that just sets everything to where it's very nice and even and then you're going to just press out after you've set your seam and I like to use a lot of steam in my iron I put it on um, the hottest setting and I use steam and starch so now we have pressed our strips and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to make sure that everything is very even and everything is pressed the right direction and then I'm going to starch and I like to starch a lot I like to use a premium starch that is not flaking if you use one that flakes it's going to ruin your quilt and the reason that I love starch is it just makes it nice, crisp, flat, um, and it just makes everything go together so much easier. And I use a ton of starch, as you can see. And what I do is I'm going to let this sit for two minutes before I press it. And I found that if you let it sit, it's going to be much crisper. So now we're just going to do our final pressing with the heavy starch and it is going to be nice and crisp and perfect and easy to work with. So now we've ironed our row and now we are ready to start cutting our block. And today I'm using a Creative Grids 6.5 by 18.5 inch ruler to cut our blocks. And the first step you're going to do is you're going to line up your very center strip with a line on the ruler. It doesn't matter which line, you just want it perfectly straight and you're going to trim. And you're going to flip it around. And we're cutting six segments, six and a half by twelve and a half. So all we have to do is use our ruler since we have a six and a half inch ruler. You line up this edge and this edge just to make sure you're perfectly straight and you cut. When you cut your next segment, you're going to do the same thing. And I'm a little bit off, so I'm going to go ahead, trim to the right, turn it around, line up the left edge and the center, and trim. And I am just putting all my scraps in this little bucket. I keep it on my table. It keeps everything very neat and out of the way. We're going to keep doing that so we've got everything lined up. We're going to turn around and trim it up. And doing this just makes your blocks 100% accurate. And then this is very important. Your very center of your strip is the most wavy and uneven and it also has a crease from when the jelly roll was rolled. So you don't want to use that piece because this is the most uneven part. So once you've cut your first three blocks, you're going to go all the way to the other end and trim it again. You're going to leave your top label on. You're not going to take that off. And again, you're going to line up the very center line on your ruler with this line. You're going to trim, flip, and we're going to repeat this step until you have six, remembering not to use the center. Lining up the edge and the edge, trimming. And you're going to repeat that step, and here we're a little bit off, so we're just going to trim on the right, turn, align the left in the center. Done, you should have six for each strip. You should have six, six and a half by 12 and a half inch blocks. So now our jelly rolls have become these beautiful blocks, and now we're going to label our stacks of blocks. I have divided each one that we've cut and stacked everything identical, just as you see. And now I'm going to label them stack one, stack two, and stack three. 
So now we're going to take our smaller blocks and turn them into bigger blocks that we're going to use in our Jelly Roll Jam quilt. And this could get a little confusing, so don't forget you can download our free pattern on our website at fatquartershop.com. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our first three blocks from stack one, and we're going to take our first three blocks from stack two. We're going to lay them down and we're going to pose the, where we've marked top so that when you sew, your seams are going to nest and go together nicely. So that's our first stack. To make our second stack, we're going to take the last three blocks from stack one and our first three blocks from stack three. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to oppose the top seams so that everything nests. That's our second set. And now we're going to take our last three blocks from stack two and our last three blocks from stack three. Oppose them and now we've got three stacks. So now we've got our blocks laid out and we're going to pin our blocks together. You're going to put your blocks right sides together and you can see that the front seam goes to the right, the back seam goes to the left. We're going to put them together and push them to nest. So you just push that seam right in, you press it all the way in there, you smush it with your fingers and you pin and it's going to keep it together perfectly. You're going to do the same thing, you're going to just push your seams in, nest them where they don't move at all and pin. I'm going to pin at every intersection. So now we've got all our blocks together and now when we go to our sewing machine everything will be pinned and nothing will go out of place. So let's get to sewing. We're going to take them to our sewing machine and I'm going to teach you how to chain piece. You're going to use a quarter inch foot or a quarter inch seam and you're just going to sew. And right when you get to your seam you're going to pull your pin out. You do not want to sew over a pin because it can break your sewing machine. We're going to keep sewing. We're not going to cut our thread. We're just going to keep sewing. Now as you chain stitch, it's going to save a lot of time and a lot of thread because you're just going. You don't have to stop to cut. I put the grab it on my sewing machine and I just pick my pins up and just keep sewing. And just make sure you do not sew over your pins. And you can see how simple it was to chain piece all your blocks together. So now what we're going to do is just cut them apart. So now we are going to iron our blocks. And again, we are going to set our seam by just pressing down gently which is just going to set your seam and make it much better when you press it open. So now we are almost done with our quilt. All we have to do is lay out our nine blocks and we are going to be done. So the first thing you can do is let's take the top tags off. You don't need them anymore. So that's our first step. And what I've done is I have put three identical blocks in a stack and I've labeled stack A, stack B, and stack C and we're going to use that, the stack names, to lay out the quilt and you do not have to do it this way but we just think it's super cute. You're going to take your three fabric A blocks and you're going to lay them out horizontally just like this and remember this quilt is supposed to be fun and you can do this any way that you would like. We're going to take the three B's one is going to go here. We're going to take the three C's in this direction. We're just going to lay them out following the diagram on our free pattern. And now you can see we've got horizontal, vertical, horizontal. And just look and see if, you know, 
Now this touches, so you might want to flip it back. It's just whatever you think looks best. So that's our quilt laid out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take them and stack them and take them to the sew machine. So I'm going to sew this direction. So I'm going to make three stacks. Keep them exactly how I have them laid out. And we're just going to go to the sewing machine and we're just going to sew down one seam, chain stitching, and then we're going to chain stitch the last seam. So now let's get to sewing. What we're going to do is we're going to sew row one together with row two, and you're going to leave row three on the side and not worry about it right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these two, the first two blocks, right sides together. We're going to line up, and in the very middle seam, we're going to pin in the center. We're going to pin on the outside edge and the other outside edge. And now you've got three pins together and this is how it should look and we're going to start sewing. So you're just going to sew with a quarter inch seam and a 2.0 stitch length and you're just going to go all the way. You're going to just keep sewing. We are not going to cut our thread. We're going to just keep chain stitching. We're just going to Put the next one right sides together, pin in the center, and each outside edge, and we're going to keep sewing. And now we have chain piece our first two rows together and it should look like this. And now we're going to add row three. Now this one we'll have to cut the thread so that when we come back you can open and you're going to add your next one. And keep pinning the same way we've been pinning three pins. So now you're just going to line your rows out on the table. You're going to keep this stitching locking the rows together so when you iron, everything stays together exactly how you had it laid out on the table. We're going to go ahead and take these row markers out since we do not need them. And what you're going to do is go to your ironing board and press each row opposing ways. So I'd press this one to the right, press these two seams to the left, and these two seams to the right. So now we've ironed our rows together, and now I went ahead and pinned the first row together using the tips that we gave you before, and we're going to sew our very last two seams and our quilt top is going to be complete. now your quilt top is complete. So making this quilt was just as simple as that. And remember, you can make two Jelly Roll Jam quilts from one Jelly Roll. And make sure to look at our website, backquartershop.com, and look at our large selection of Jelly Rolls and to download this free pattern. Thanks for quilting with me and make sure to watch for our next shortcut quilt video.